It's an absolutely stunning afternoon here in Sonoma and wine country in California in the North Bay of this beautiful state. And a beautiful state for us to see race cars down in the pre-grid area and getting ready to come out. It is Pirelli GT4 America, and it is the sprint category coming out for the eighth round of the season, third of a very busy weekend of racing. It's Pirelli GT4 America sprint racing presented and sponsored by CrowdStrike. As we take a look at our starting lineup, there's two really different elements that are unfolding here, Cal. In terms of the points, there are some gaps that are starting to build in the championship. But in terms of the speed on the track, things couldn't be closer in each of the two classes. It's so tight here, Greg. Uh, amongst the pro runners, you've got three guys on the front of that grid separated by a mere tenth of a second over a complete lap around this racetrack. When you move to the AM division, well, you've got the two leaders in the championship back on row two, but only a quarter of a second separate the top four qualifiers there in that class as well. It's going to be an awesome race here this afternoon. Yeah, it should be absolutely spectacular. Look there at Frank Gannett, who is uh, driving the second of the Ian Lacey Racing, G3 Racing Ford Mustangs. And uh, it's been interesting watching what we've seen from Drew Staveley here, not just this season in his first season as a pro, but also uh, as uh, what he's done just this weekend in his progress. And as the cars head out on this racetrack, let's give you a look from the driver's eye view with our Porsche track preview with a young gun in GT3. Hello, this is Maxwell Root, and this is your Porsche track preview at Sonoma Raceway. We're approaching turn one at about 140 miles an hour, focusing on maximizing our rotation up here, down to second gear, really getting all the power down using the rest of the road. We're approaching turn three. This is an uphill elevation change that is really important to maximize power and to use the maximum road down to second gear for four all the road here as well this is a flat out section setting up for the carousel which is a very important part of the track for time rotating the car here opening my hands as I'm running all the way to the exit road this is a nice place to take a small drink and refocus for the stent ahead braking right around the 250 board down to second gear trailing the brake and rotating the car, parking it, and setting up for the back S section. Up to third, fourth gear here. I'm gonna take a small lift into 8A and really maximize our speed as we open our hands and go down the back straightaway. Braking, this is a small fast chicane, first gear, small lift, and back to full power, flat out around 10 opening our hands up and setting up for a successful 11 to complete the lap, avoiding a small bump here on the brakes, down to first gear, waiting on the rotation, opening the hands and maximizing the power all the way to the wall. Thank you guys. Well, you just got a ride from a GT3 class winner here at Sonoma already this weekend. Thank you very much, Max. As the field comes around, going to be two safety and pace laps here, so we get the one more lap to head around this track here. And, Max, obviously, anytime you're out on the track, it's a search for speed. But as you can see by his inputs on the wheel here, it's a search for grip. Yeah, he had fast hands there, didn't he? Trying to get that Porsche <laughs> around this race circuit. And you got to be up on your toes here. You need a lot of finesse. You have to attack this racetrack, but you've got to be really wary about tire management here, even for this 50-minute sprint race. You just got to make sure those tires are underneath you. If there is a reset, a caution or something for the final 10 minutes. But the guy at the front of this field has been pretty much unstoppable this weekend. The championship leader, Michael Cooper, the Black Dog Speed Shop, McLaren just been dominant here he's just really been tough to beat he feels like he owns this racetrack those are his words not <laughs> mine and uh, he certainly owned it this uh, weekend in this class in particular so what can do the chasers do what can drew stavely do from the front row what can spencer von Pelly do most importantly i feel is he's the closest pursuer in the championship standings but after the dominant weekend that michael's had here he won the final two rounds of vir he's won the first two here He's opened up a 26-point lead in this championship. Pompelli has to somehow respond here today. Yeah, and uh, for the first time this weekend, Spencer not on the front row of this grid, so that makes things all the more difficult here. As uh, before we went for that onboard lap, I was talking about what Drew Stavely has been doing his first season as a pro. Got a win right off the bat at Circuit of the Americas, but this weekend, Every race when they've come out on track, we've seen a little bit better pace from Drew. The team continues to massage the car, and uh, Drew continues to extract performance out of it. And uh, now he's sort of uh, uh, got himself in a position to 
really stay focused and be a big part of this championship. He has. So uh, we lost last year's winner of the championship, Ian James. But, I mean, Staveley's effectively walked right into his shoes in yes. terms of making it still very much a three and at times four-horse race for this championship. Jared Andretti is having a quiet weekend. He admits that the Andretti Autosport team have not really figured out the secrets to getting around this racetrack effectively. So he'll line up fourth here today. But um, typically he's backpedaling a little bit from these leaders. Let's see what he can come up with for the third and final run of the weekend. And right behind him on pole in the AM class, is Mark Clennon in the premier copier KPR Sin R1 GT4 entry, that prototypical looking machine. And again, you see Staley just, he just dynamites the brakes and just locks them up just a little bit. And it just gives him, I think, really gets those tires warm uh, before the start of this. We've had a lot of racing on this track, so you think, okay, lots of good rubber down, but it's also the warmest it's been this entire weekend. It just touched 91 degrees. So we'll see what effect that has. 50 minutes, single driver sprint competition about to unfold here at Sonoma. And the green flag flies. Michael Cooper from pole noses ahead. And what a move by Andretti. Yeah, just tucks that McLaren right in front of Pompelli. Pompelli trying to recover here a little bit as they get side by side up into turn two. It's going to be fascinating to see how it plays out. Right behind Pompelli is your pole sitter in the AM category, Mark Clennon. And he's been very fast in the first half of each of the races so far this weekend. And then fades just a little bit. And he's under attack right away by Jeff Burton in the Burton Lumber. That silver he's rear. Through. Oh, he got him. Burn a big lunge down the inside. He makes it stick, and his teammate Paul Terry may go with him. He did. And as a matter of fact, now My uh, Michael Dynan trying to get around in the Flying Lizard car. He sneaks through. There's him oh. around the outside, so Mark's just got to regroup here from the pole. Just struggling for grip, it seems, here in the opening lap. Yeah, tough opening lap here. And now Pompelli, he knows I've got to figure out a way to get through here. Just hasn't had the best of starts any of the days, in fact, oh. from the pole. Cooper got around him immediately. Working through this great SSX. You Burton a little wide right there, but he had enough of a margin back to his uh, teammate, Paul Terry, who's got a win here this weekend in this category. Yeah, he split the spoils with Michael Dynan, yeah. who's had five wins on the season, has a healthy championship lead, but Terry's certainly been up on the wheel and very effective aboard the red and racing Aston Martin Vantage. Here's Clennon, and uh, just trying to get the temp of those tires. And part of it might be this sin runs a little bit lighter than some of these other cars. And that just means it takes longer to get energy into those tires, doesn't it? It does. Now, Sean Quinlan's starting to put the pressure on aboard the Cameron Racing BMW M4. And Jason Bell, in his eighth race of the weekend, follows him. <laughs> He's been a busy boy. Boy, he has just been driving everything. And... Uh, Got three second place finishes in the uh, GT Sports Club GT2 category. Uh, he's been having a really strong week, and he and Andrew Davis had a great run in the uh, Sprint X category for the Pirelli GT4 America Championship. So good stuff here, but boy, Spencer's getting a good l launch here. Thought for a minute he might have enough of a run down to the inside, but one thing uh, that we have seen since he came into this championship is Jared Andretti is not an easy pass. He isn't, and this is uh, what Spencer Pompelli can ill afford right now. He's losing ground in the championship. He's losing ground in this race. He tucks it to the inside, gets inside Andretti. It's going to be side by side coming off. It's going to be a drag race down to turn seven. Andretti tries to come back at him. Spencer gives him the inside lane. He just take it in deep on the brakes, sweep across, and he makes the position stick. That was nice. Spencer gave him room at the exit of the carousel just in case. Uh, but he had enough speed that he was able to uh, slide through and make it stick. And impressive here, Jeff Burton, the AM driver. Because this was the uh, place last year where he and his co-driver, Vesco Kozarov, got an overall finish as a Western AM pairing. And I think this is a place that uh, Jeff Burton says, I'm fast. I like this track, and I like racing it here. He's got to be taking a lot of pleasure. And I don't know he's got his his nose right up under the wing Ooh. of a guy named Andretti. Terry there, really wide, Ooh. coming out of the nine chicane, drops his right side tires, nearly loses control. Dynan is really close to him. Dynan looks to the inside, not quite close enough. Yeah, that deep blue flying lizard portion, this is their home track, a lot of laps here. And, uh, but Reardon Racing, based in Utah, they do a fair amount of racing here as well, and this is gonna be a great study 
And right now, you take a look at that AM category. It's three Aston Martins. They just seem really suited to this track. They do. It just really works well around this race circuit. And it's horses for courses, but certainly this is the horse for this one. <laughs> Dynan just juking in and out, trying to see if you can rattle Terry. When you see a guy in front of you make a little mistake like Terry did, then you just want to hound him even more, don't you? And think uh, maybe I can get him to make another one, but bigger this time I can get through. Yeah, he's just going to keep working him over. They've traded punches here this weekend. It's been a fascinating battle, but it's good to see that the win racing group are really getting their arms wrapped around this Aston Martin. I mean, Dynan's been spectacular this year. We have to win earlier today in the Sprint X Championship along with his teammate Robbie Foley. Five wins, healthy lead in the championship right now. 42-point lead over the man he's chasing right now, so... He's got to think big picture a little bit, but there's a lot of racer in that young man, and uh, you know he's going to want to get around him. Well, Clennon has found his rhythm, and he is now running laps faster than everybody in the AMP class except for Jeff Burton on that last lap. Uh, so Clennon, uh, Clennon, obviously, tires, whatever it is, uh, he's in the zone once again here and uh, seeming living in the zone here this year and uh, certainly in sprint competition is Michael Cooper in that McLaren. Yeah, healthy gap there back to Drew Stavely, and now we can just focus on managing the tires. Yesterday, we thought he was managing it really, really well, but about a second to a second and a half, and he said, I was dri driving absolutely flat out, but just uh, trying to keep some tire underneath him. This race circuit is super abrasive, so it will wear the tires out if you abuse them early. Spencer now gapping Jared Andretti, trying to chase down Drew Stavely. Home race for TRG, the LaSalle Solutions. The Dolby Wine racing Porsche here. They want to celebrate something here tonight. They're not going to be happy with just a podium. They want more. Absolutely. Oh, man, and really yeah. slow. Michael just, excuse me, Terry, really slow there. Michael's around the outside. They give each other enough racing room. Nice, clean move there. So Paul Terry seems to be struggling a little bit, but he comes back at him. What a battle this is. Fantastic. These two ass. Oh, and Terry runs a little bit wide. And Dynan was still on his shoulder, and that slowed Dynan up as he dropped his tires into the dirt. And this might be an opportunity for Clennon, who has really stormed up and caught these guys. Yeah, I'm not sure whether he just ran Michael out there or he just missed his breaking point a little bit and couldn't get his car turned. But either way, Michael yep. now uh, having to uh, try and catch back up. Not sure they touched there or not, but certainly Michael couldn't get turned in and ended up in the dirt. I'm not sure that was intentional at all by Terry, but uh, he just saw an opportunity pounced and I think just got in a little hotter than uh, on that inside line and suddenly you can't turn quite as effectively. Real seesaw battle here this weekend. Who's going to have the upper hand in terms of claiming the most points for the weekend? They've had a win apiece. Right now they're chasing down Paul Terry's teammate, Jeff Burton, who's just taken off from the front. Doing a really nice job and he's got confidence here as well, Jeff Burton. He's flying. He just turned a 149.1, and everybody behind him is in the high 49s. Now, with the exception of Jason Bell, who just turned a 49.4. Here's another look at it, Cal. Yeah, that was so t close to those uh, fenders touching right there. And then I don't think he ran him out there. I just think he couldn't get the car turned. He's on a very shallow approach exactly. on the wrong side of the road, kind of on the dirty part of the racetrack as well. Couldn't get the grip to make the car turn effectively. So they just have to... Start to focus here and see if they can get after running down a very impressive Jeff Burton in that Burton Lumber rear and racing Aston Martin up the road a bit. Fine Lizard Motorsport pit crew looking on there. Thomas Blaum, their strategist. Certainly admiring the job that Michael Dine has been doing for that, that group this year. Really, really strong season for Michael. And Spencer Papelli has closed up to just a, a just a tick over a half a second off of Stavely, so it's going to be a good little scrap too here. But this one is really, really close, and these guys have shown the willingness to get ultra racy early. It's been close at times. <laughs> well, that's an understatement. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I'm curious to know what the dynamic is. What is the feelings between the two drivers right now? Is it respect in terms of just code hard racing, or is there any animosity? to wait and see how this plays out. Arcing through these S's. For both of these drivers, Greg, we've seen over the last couple of years, a lot of pace from both of them, but now they find a car, found a car that they're both comfortable with and they're starting to demonstrate the consistency 
and ultimately the rewards in terms of the results they've been looking for. There's Stavely, and right behind him is that LaSalle Solutions TRG Porsche. Great support from uh, Kevin Buckler's Adobe Road Winery, and they have the Racing Series Wines, which is, a, as it is implied, a racing-specific and dedicated series of wines that uh, incredibly well-received. And Spencer, proud to carry those colors as he heads up the hill here, trying to figure a way around Drew Stavely. Kevin's wines are some tasty stuff. This is a tasty little battle here. Yeah. Spencer was really starting to heap the pressure on. Just seems though that the raceability of the Porsche, the lap time seems to be there, a one lap specialist. It really seems to be, but in the course of the race, it just doesn't seem to have all of the goodies in the right place around this race circuit to get the win. Spencer's just gonna hound Stavely. I think the one thing he can do is try and get Stavely to push that uh, Machine just a little bit, maybe uh, take a little bit too much out of the tires. Spencer was three tenths quicker than both of the guys in front of him on that last lap. So, the car's working well, but he's just had that bad start trying to recover from that. Yeah, Cooper's only two seconds up the road here, but of course, a lot of racing yet to go. Oh, look at this. Dining, Dining into, into Terry. Terry. Yep. Was the door closed on him or did he overcommit? Bit of damage to that side sill, as you can see, and door on the right-hand side. Terry able to continue, but boy, as he dropped ground. Back to this battle for second place. We'll give the TRG Adobe Road folks one more plug. Uh, their, their new showroom uh, in Petaluma, California. Uh, it's just about, what, a half hour away, so, and this is where TRG ran its first ever pro race, which Kevin Buckner probably won and established themselves as a serious player in sports car racing on the pro level for a lot of years. So this is special ground here. This is home turf in a big way for Kevin. And he believes that when they show up here, they should be winning. So I know he's a little bit frustrated by getting big points and podiums, but he's a winner. And yeah, he's a winner exactly. down deep. So uh, there's uh, Terry, and at that uh, moment, field was still compacted enough that he slipped all the way to the end of the field and he's just got it now I really focus a little bit don't let the red mist do anything other than give you some speed here incident is under review between uh, Diamond and Terry so we'll have to wait and see if uh, Michael was deemed to be at fault there we caught it pretty late in terms of how the action evolved but now Spencer Pompelli really deep on the bumper looks to the inside he really doesn't give him the opening Spencer's car is working well. It's really unfortunate that he was starting from the third position on the grid and then had a, a rough start there. Well, I don't think it was so much a rough start for him, but a brilliant start for Jared Andretti. Yes, yes. And I'm wondering now if uh, Spencer might be just sort of lulling, trying to lull Drew a little bit with the line he's taking into seven, and at some point, if he's not going to pop out wide and then square up hard underneath, because the car seems like he could carve that arc into that corner pretty well. He could, it's, it's a tough one. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you've got someone who's really struggling with tire degradation, who's just plain slow, then you can make the move. But when you're dealing with someone like Drew Stavely, it's gonna be hard to make that stick, and it gets really risky in terms of uh, avoidable contact being called on you. You know he's gonna keep digging. Oh, you know that. You see there, the Mustang stretches the Porsche. Car length or so down this front straightaway. Drew's a little, a little bit wide. wide there, allows Spencer to really close up on the tail as they hit turn two. Sal Solution branding shining bright on the side of that Porsche. It's the one thing when you're dealing with the pandemic that we're dealing with right now, it's a totally different environment for entertaining, but Kevin Butler's pretty innovative. Does these virtual wine tasting now for the Adobe wines yeah. and uh, just trying to keep all of his uh, partners engaged and uh, he really appreciates their support in difficult times. No question. Uh, he's, he, he's great with the activation and uh, he's great with the follow through and it's uh, creative thinking in this era right now. And uh, that's something that uh, he's certainly known for. It's uh, for Spencer. Creative thinking is going to have to come into play here at some point as well, isn't it? 
Well, Kevin Butler's a huge believer in Spencer's talent, as we all are, and uh, I think that's what frustrates him the most, because he thinks that Spencer's the best guy in the field. I mean, we've got great drivers with Staveley and certainly Michael Cooper as well, but um, I think it frustrates Kevin even more when he feels that he's put all of the pieces in play, yet they can't win races at the moment, but they'll keep digging deep. And certainly McLaren has been a tough uh, force to fight against this year. Well, and Drew Stavely right now has mirrors full of that uh, chrome silver. And uh, what's the word from the Ian Lacey Racing Camp, Ryan? Well, one of the things that we've been following all weekend has been the tire strategy that the Ian Lacey Racing team has played. And everyone's got the same tire allotment, but how you use those tires is a little bit different. They had done some things with scuffing tires, for instance, that they believe gave them some extra longevity over the course of the run. But that's all equal here in race number three of the weekend. I understand that all of the top three runners are effectively on the same tires, right? Tires that they qualified on. So they should have approximately the same life. And that would indicate to me at least that the trend that we've seen where Drew Stavely is better and better over the course of a long run, that might not be the case here this time around. What do you guys think? Well, we just watched him come up and over 3A, and while Spencer's Porsche was absolutely planted, Drew had a little bit of a drift as they came up and over the rise. So uh, if nothing else, at least we know he's pushing hard right now, but on this track, uh, you push too hard, you damage those tires. You certainly do, and uh, Spencer's car looks to be working really well. I mean, it seems like it'd be hard to improve on it. I mean, he's obviously feeling the grip and how much he's able to uh, chase the corners, but he's tucking into the corners, he's cutting the lines, doesn't seem to be drifting at this early stage of the race. The key is, as he told me earlier in the weekend, is to really get the wheels straight and just accelerate off these corners without burning down the rear tires. Cooper, that margin, there it is. You can see it. It uh, was 2.7 seconds last time by. And when you get a little bit of a margin built up like that, then you can maybe back off by a tenth or so and uh, work on tire preservation. But of course, it all depends on how much you took out of the tires to build that margin at that point too, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's what happened yesterday. We thought he's managing it, but it's, oh, Spencer looks deep into the brake zone. Can't quite get it alongside, and Drew just goes for the apex, no problem. You see right there again, Drew going to the throttle, and that back end slips around just a little bit. No slide like that from Pompelli. Yeah, that could be a factor if we uh, have another 10 or 15 minutes of this race. But the question is then, how much of a lead does Cooper build up for Spencer to maybe chase down if he does get into position two? Yeah, well, that time now, the margin, first time is up in over three seconds, not by much. But Cooper running a tenth quicker than Pompelli and a couple tenths quicker than Stavely. Michael Cooper serenely on his way. He's had so much success here over the years in all of the different categories that he's run in. And he's like a golfer. Going back to a golf course that he's won on before, you just have that confidence factor when you look at the, the layout. You know, he's got different tools to deal with in terms of the car. In his case, he just uh, knows that he can get the job done. I mean, some of the moves yeah. he made earlier in the weekend, Greg, to get the lead, particularly yes. in uh, race one, was sensational. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, and Cooper has supreme confidence in his ability. There's no question about that, too. To end up in a, with a factory ride for a manufacturer, you better have that. But the interesting part of that was actually uh, he, he made a comment after that first race where he said, I own this place. And uh, it was kind of startling to hear it. But, you know, what he meant was, was I love this place and I'm good here. And it's always going to be a challenge for somebody to beat me here. And Terry trying to work up now gets down to the inside of Frank Gannett. Runs a little wide. Frank, nice counter move down to the inside. <laughs> I love that. I do too. I Great love to, to see, see it from Frank. Frank Gannett just really digging deep and getting racy. He wouldn't have done that 12 months ago. His confidence is building. His pace is getting much, much better. Really cool. Yeah, very new to racing at this level compared to some of these other guys. And uh, he's passionate about it. And uh, that speed in racecraft is definitely coming. Isn't it? It's just the confidence factor and not being intimidated and allowing yourself to go side by side. And uh, it's just experience. Uh, once you've done it a few times, it's, it feels OK. And drive through penalty for Michael Dynan for that contact with Paul Terry. Wow, that's huge. It cost him about 35 seconds. So we'll have to see how this brings him out. You know, the margins here. Terry's through. Yep, that's it. So he will drop to the back of the pack. 
And now Terry sets his sights on Sean Quinlan, and this is Stephen Cameron Racing's home track as well. So you know that orange and blue BMW just in front of these two here, and you know Sean Quinlan has a ton of laps around here, and you know Steve Cameron and that team have a handle on setting up a BMW here. Yeah, they really do. Uh, they always uh, have been a strong performer, and uh, winning the Sprint X Championship last year, that's quite a feather in their caps, and I think that gave Sean Quinlan the experience and certainly the confidence as well. It wasn't all just about his teammate Gregory Leofuge. It was uh, Sean's contribution to that title as well, which was very vital in, in terms of them being on top. Here is Sean working his way up into turn seven. Using that big arc. Coming back through. Flicking it to the left and getting on the throttle here for the run into the S's. With that stop by, uh, that drive through by Dynan, it's Burton leading, but second right now is pole sitter Mark Clennon. He dropped back early, but has just stayed after it. And is going to find himself sitting in second spot right now. Jason Bell in the GMG. Frost NYC, number two. The Porsche sits third. Then Sean Quinlan and Terry in this battle for fourth. Yeah, what a result that would be for Jason Bell to uh, finish off the weekend on the back of seven other races yeah, to uh, exactly. get a podium here in the final one. And there is Mr. Burton in that Burton Lumber Reardon Racing Aston Martin, and he has just had a phenomenal start and just has driven away from everybody. He just he's, feels he's like he that, should be there. Yeah, he's found that zone, hasn't he? He really has, the car's working well. Again, we talk about Reardon Racing really now fine-tuning this Aston Martin platform that they switched to in the off-season and uh, just getting great results and lap times. There's Spencer Pumpelli now side-by-side -side with Drew Stavely as they head towards Turn 7, heaping the pressure on. He's going to try the outside arc, isn't he? And this could work. This could work. He's got to work him over. He had that little slide. He's there. He's there. Can he tuck it in? Who can get the power down the sooner? Spencer gets the job done. That was really nice. Yes, great racecraft. I thought mid-corner when he had that little bit of a slide that that might have known his run and not the case. Boy, that was Spencer Pompelli showcasing what he can do. Yeah, I think it's also showcasing that maybe Stavely struggling for grip here yep. a little bit as well. So now Spencer's going to be on the charge. Needs to get his head down, hammer down. Still got over half this race to work with. Now we can look at the delta between he and the leader, Michael Cooper, who has the fast laps as we... Uh, Observe this next few minutes of the race. Yeah, the margin last time by officially 3.6. Might have blown up a little bit because Spencer running side by side with somebody that generally slows you down a little bit. And he'll come through, but it's what happens from mouth. Yeah, there it is, up to four seconds. But this this is it. Oh, there's a battle here now. Is Jason Bell has closed in on Mark Clennon. I just wanted to mention something for uh, with uh, Mark Clennon and that KPR team the premier copier entry last year here they had a couple of young as Reardon and uh, Paul Terry and that Paul Terry trucking Aston Martin are able to slip through but uh, Mark Clennon and his wife had a couple of special teenage guests here last year and one of them they uh, his name is sincere and uh, their family has just gone through a really horrific family tragedy and uh, Jamie asked me if we could just give a moment and just say that uh, from the team, from Jamie and from Mark, warm wishes to Sincere and his family. And uh, we're sure all thinking about you here. And boy, this isn't done. This is how this started, Cal. Yeah, this is a replay. And Matt Paul's already got the move. He's all like worked him over through the tour. He gets it done down to the inside into the break zone. Just takes it in super deep. So he's fired up. And the good news for him is He's trying to re-enter that championship leader, Michael Dynan. Now, Michael Dynan runs in the seventh position, and Terry's up to fourth as he takes it in super deep there into the carousel. <laughs> Almost mixed it, missed his mark there. Yes, he did. Floated it way wide. As Cooper just... One of the things you watch about Michael Cooper is uh, just the consistency of his line when he drives around a track. Uh, that, that left side tire in a certain corner is almost always in the exact same spot. The next corner, the rights are as well. It's just a incredible consistency. Well, looking at the first couple of sectors, he's uh, inched away from Spencer by a couple of tenths. So we'll have to see how this uh, finishes up. He had a 4.1 second lead last time across the stripe. He may have extended it even further. And after five 
seconds. So uh, Cooper may have got the radio nod that Spencer's through to second and has responded to try and increase that gap a little bit. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating to watch these lap times. And Stavely hasn't exactly just fallen way behind here. He's not going to give up either. Again, Andretti, though, about uh, almost four seconds adrift of Stavely right now. Yeah, a little bit closer, though. I think this is a stronger performance from Jared yes. Andretti and the whole group there. He seems to have uh, not be dropping away as much as he did on the first couple of days. So it's a learning curve, and uh, next year we'll come back to this racetrack as we see the check it for Andretti. Logo on the side of the car military for motorsports and uh, it's a special livery for this weekend check it for Andretti uh, basically pays homage to uh, Jared's father John Andretti uh, who was a presence in this paddock the last couple of years and uh, passed away in January and uh, he is deeply missed not just by Jared of course but by the en entire Andretti family and all the fans and that certainly includes us and uh, after a long battle with colon cancer they created this hashtag movement while this was unfolding uh, and the problems we're beginning here in 2017 is an awareness campaign started by John to pay attention to the importance of early colon cancer detection through screening. And that's what the Check It For Andretti is all about. Military to Motorsports, of course, founded by a former Navy SEAL named David Tilton, along with Michael Andretti in 2016, to give a little bit back to America's armed services by hiring uh, some of these very special veterans uh, that have special skill sets developed in the military that can be applied into the motorsports arena. So uh, a couple of very special programs near and dear to Andretti Autosport and Jared uh, and the entire Andretti family's hearts. Boy, he was floating some speed through that corner, laying down a couple of black streaks. He is up <laughs> on the wheel as always. Ryan, what are you hearing from the Andretti camp? Well, that is uh, customary Andretti family, isn't it? It doesn't matter if it's uh, Jared or if John or his dad, of course, or Mario or Michael or Adam. I mean, you name the Andretti, that's how they drive. And I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier in the weekend, but I'll give a plug to the new book that's out about uh, about John Andretti, Jared's dad, Racer by Jane Gers. My copy just arrived, and I've been enjoying it so far. But as far as this weekend is concerned, it's not been the, the kind of result that they're looking for. And, and it seems like just an overall lack of grip is what they're dealing with. And it's been a real challenge. They've been working away at it. I know Colin Mullen has really helped out on the Sprint X side of things. And some of that's carried over here on the Sprint side. But yeah, it's just been a real point of frustration. They just can't get that car quite dialed in. And maybe it's especially frustrating when you consider that the McLaren has proven to be such a potent weapon here in the hands of Michael Cooper throughout this weekend to this point. I know Jarrett doesn't take that uh, lying down. He's going to be up on the wheel trying to find any advantage he can. And, and this uh, this weekend can't be sitting too, too well with the way it's played out to this point. Yeah, good point, Ryan. And that's got to be frustrating when it's the identical car. And I say that, of course, in quotes, because every car has its little idiosyncrasies. But, you know, to have another guy in that uh, similar type of car having the kind of weekend that Michael Cooper's having, and for Jared Andretti, who last year, really, the tables were turned. They were better with that car than the Black Dog team, and uh, it's uh, flip-flopped. And uh, sometimes it leaves you scratching your head. It does, and you can start to overdrive a little bit or really get too uh, aggressive with the setup changes that you make. So it's a bit of a head scratcher for sure, but I think Black Dog Speed Shop went through that early last year when Jared Andretti seemed to have the pace over Michael Cooper. With You'd have to think that Michael Cooper's experience would have played out, that he should have been the top dog, but that wasn't the case through the first few races of last year. But gradually, Michael Cooper's experience has come into play, and certainly the Black Dog Speed Shop team with Ray Sorensen and the whole group there have turned things around, and we can see the dominance that they currently have in this category so but this is just a wonderful performance I mean uh, Jeff's had a busy weekend as well run six races and uh, you can just see that um, he made that move early got inside of Clinton on the run down in turn four and hasn't looked back I mean he's just been unstoppable in the end division yeah very impressive and uh, he just so enjoys this uh, he, he, you see him at the racetrack and uh, generally just a big smile and it uh, doesn't mean he's not feisty, doesn't mean he's not competitive. We saw that in the Sprint X race yesterday. Uh, but uh, he is just putting on a superb performance here. And again, he loves this track. And he just looks to, he's looked really smooth here. I think this is his best outing of the weekend. Just hasn't really put a foot wrong under no pressure. 
So uh, I'm sure they're just uh, counting him down here. 21 minutes to go. Just stay focused. You can see uh, Jared Andretti up ahead. Not that's really a, any big battle, but it's nice to have that little carrot there. Just kind of see someone up ahead of you, give you a sight line and a picture to be chasing after. Absolutely. I mean, he is running laps as fast or faster than anybody in the AM class right now. His last lap time was uh, 50.5. That equals Michael Cooper. So um, he's very much in the yeah. mix in terms of uh, fastest car on the racetrack. Yeah, doing a great job. Speaking of Michael Cooper, there he is. Cap up to five and a half seconds over Spencer Pompelli. That's kind of a gut punch, isn't it? When you work your way from fourth up into second and the car feels fast and everything, you think, all right, I'm going to put my head down and go after this guy, and suddenly that margin starts growing a little bit. Yeah, it gets smaller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's driving away from you a little bit, and uh, I just think that Michael got the message once uh, Spencer was through, and he knows that he's his closest uh, challenger in the championship, even, even though Stavely's not that far away, and I think that the team would have said, okay, Spencer's moved up to second, it's go time if you have anything without taking too much out of the tires. Well, well, uh, you know, Spencer was dealing with Andretti and then dealing with Stavely at that point. Cooper had opened up, what, about a three-second lead at one point. And at that stage, a driver of his caliber, you know, he knows, all right, I can take it back a tenth or so if I have to and really preserve these tires. So should Spencer be able to work his way up or should there be a caution or whatever the reason, I've got to make sure I've got some tire left to be able to fight with. Yes, there's always that potential, even though we haven't seen a lot of full course cautions here this weekend. But even so, I mean, he's super savvy, he's super smart. He's not going to drive the tires off that car and have nothing left if there is a quick reset before the finish. And for Spencer Pompali, it's like he's doing what he can do. I mean, all yep. you can do is maximize the equipment that you have and uh, the execution from the team. But uh, I really feel that the starts of these races uh, this weekend have not been his best. Not sure if it's just the uh, approach speed to the start line in terms of the torque of that Porsche motor or whatever, but uh, just hasn't really got the jump up in the first couple of corners and has been taken advantage of a couple of times. Watch Drew work his way up the hill, keeping her eyes on. There's that battle for second in the AM category between the 62 of Clennon and the number two of Bell. That's uh, down to under a second, so that is a great scrap right now. And the interesting thing is, is that Terry is running laps in the range of eight tenths or so faster than those two guys. So Paul Terry, after that uh, spin, he is starting to close up on this great battle for second in the AM category between that white 62 sin of Clennon and the Porsche of Jason Bell. I think the other thing is, is that uh Michael Dynan at the tail end of this field. He's probably got plenty of time to catch Frank Annette and try and make a move there. And then I think he'd love to get up into the top five. So I think Sean Quinlan is possibly his target. But he's got to dig deep and uh, really hammer some lap times out to make it. Just Absolutely. minimize the damage a little bit. He's running good laps, 150.4 by Dynan last time. But uh, looking at Terry, uh, previous lap, as I said, he was running almost eight tenths quicker than these two guys. I think he may have pushed it a little too hard because his last lap, he suddenly dropped a fair amount of time, turned to 152. Well, the guys in front, uh, well, actually, they both did as well. So his charge was blunted here. And there is Clennon in that uh, really unique Sin R1 GT4. What we've seen over the first couple of days is, is a really impressive pace in general this weekend. Great job by Mark, but just faded a little bit towards the end. So he's just got to really maintain that focus for the full 50 minutes here this afternoon. Yep, just hit his marks, stay clean, don't overrun. And force the guys that are, are chasing you to take more out of their car than you are at this stage. And Jason Bell. You know, like you said, this is his eighth race of the weekend, so he's, he's He's got a ton of track time. But he's just been so disciplined, Greg. Yeah, I mean, he just seems really to be has. totally under control. And I find that hard to believe that someone can run eight races, jump between very different disciplines and race cars, and just be so consistent. Yeah, he's been quick. He's got, I don't know how many podiums he's put up. He's three in the sports club. And I think he and Andrew Davis knocked a couple out as well.
So it's been a big weekend for Jason Bell. For Clennon after that great lap that he turned early in the race yesterday to give him fast lap and that's how these sprint races the first qualifying session on the weekend there's only one session really sets the grid for that first race and then the next race's grid is established by fast laps from the first race. And Mark put in a beauty here but uh, now he gets to find out what kind of metal he has not only keeping Bell at bay but possibly Terry as well. Yes. Everyone's going to dig deep now here yes. and uh, throw caution to the wind. We got any tie life left, and now is the time to use it up. Terry arcing through turn seven, and uh, let's check into the pits. And Ryan, what's up? We were talking about the Jason Bell story, how busy he has been. And I saw him just before climbing in the car here for this race after already having run seven races this weekend. And I asked him, Hey, has this gone as you expected, being as busy as you are? Is this what you were anticipating? And he told me, yeah, you know, this has been great. I've been having a ton of fun. He said, I'm not even tired, which is absolutely amazing to me. So it speaks to the level of fitness that, that he has developed and, and the amount of work that he's put in. He knew he was in for a challenge before the season began, and he's proven to be up for it. Yeah, he's probably so exhausted at the end of the day, he's getting great nights of sleep. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, he's just done a remarkable job. And I think part of that is obviously, you know, GMG, one of the things that uh, they are known for is their customer development program. They get a, you know, a customer that comes in and, uh, you know, the core business of GMG is, you know, taking high performance sports cars and tweaking on them, aftermarket work, high tuning, whatever. You get a customer, he comes in, he goes, boy, you know, I'd like to go out and do some track day stuff and really drive this fast. Well, let's do that. And then if that customer shows some real pace, they go, well, you know, do you want to race it? We'll help you do that. And what they do is they have this uh, cadre of people involved, Andrew Davis among them, mm -hmm. that then work with these customers, coach them up, give them data baselines. And uh, I think Andrew Davis is, you've got to give him, and James, who of course is no slouch behind the wheel, some pretty significant credit uh, for what they've been able to do to uh, really uh, get Jason Bell uh, to be as proficient as he has been in all these different cars. Ooh, is he coming in fast. Yeah, really deep in there. So I'm not sure if Mark just overslowed the uh, the sin there on the approach to turn seven, but Jason was just eating him up there into the break zone. And then he got in a little, little deeper than he wanted in the back end of that Porsche just rotated a smidge. Yeah, you take a gearhead in the GMG shop, it's like a kid in a candy store. Oh, I mean, there's so that? many goodies uh, laying around that place. And Clennon realizing Bell is now in full attack mode. Ooh, Bell, a little too hot there. And if you cut the backside of that chicane, sometimes the stewards look at that with a little bit of a wary eye. And so Bell elected to give up the uh, track position. But the problem is, is now that side-by-side -side battling, look who's coming and coming up quick. Really quick. And uh, we're kind of running into the zone that we've seen in the last couple of days here for Mark Clennon. We thought there was maybe some technical issues yep. in the late going. But once again, he just seemed to have... Uh, Lost his rhythm a little bit. Very early on the brakes there for turn seven and for turn nine, unless he is having some kind of brake issue with that car. Well, and one of the things with the Sin, and uh, you've talked about it before, one of the reasons they moved to the Sin was it didn't have the driver aids um, that can sometimes mask things for a driver's feel for the car, and they wanted to get Mark back into that zone of really being able to feel things. Well, on this track, when the tires start to go away, sometimes those driver aids are really nice. <laughs> Yeah, they really are. You know, and he's doing this on his own here right now. Oh, Jason Bell yeah. in there super deep there as he just went out of the camera view. I think he may have just kept it on the road, but lost a bit more ground as well. So he's on the attack and he can see Paul Terry coming. So Terry's got to be thinking, you know, with Dynan down in uh, last position in class, I'm running fourth right now. If I grab two more positions, that will really cut into that 42 point lead that Michael Dynan had starting this race today. That's a really good point. Yeah, and you're right. Uh, you could hear a little bit of tire chirp from Bell heading into turn four. It's a made up what he lost there, but here comes Paul Terry. And I mean, he's been running the last couple of laps. He's been running again, five, half a second to eight tenths quicker than the guys in front, Cal. I'll tell you, he's got the bit between his teeth is uh, Michael Dynan, a 150.2. That compares to a 151.3 for our leader. No one else in the same zip code in terms of lap times. He's got to, uh, yeah, with that kind of time, he's going to be on the back of Gannett in a big hurry. But then it's a big gap from Gannett to Quinlan. He's got a lot of work to do and not much time to do it. Oh, oh Clennon 
suddenly the slows in the pit lane. Some kind of technical issue here. That's a oh, shame. What a shame. He had a great run going. Yeah, so maybe those issues we saw where he's super slowing in a couple of the brake zones. There was something going on with the car. Just, Just had nothing there. It. Yeah. Oh boy. Actually did just run over there as close as the racing speed. Would have been easy to see some contact here. So no Terry's up a position, but also is Michael Diamond, so it really doesn't help his championship cause much. Bell now second, but yeah. Jeff Burton 18 seconds down the road. Yeah, what a day he's had. Yeah, he just got his head down and just taken off in this field. Quick update uh, from pit lane. We're hearing that the problem for Clennon might be electrical. And if you remember at VIR, he was having a good run going, and then the car just stopped, and he ended up parked at pit in for a while. So he's got something going on in that car. The premier copier entry, so. That's a real shame. And he's out. Makes this terminal. That's a shame. Yeah, it is. He had a great run going. A uh, good weekend in all. Yeah, great speed. Pole for today. Running a solid second. That's a tough break. He's one of the great characters in the paddock. And uh, this, this will be frustrating, but I'll guarantee you at a certain point, he'll just turn into his normal Mr. Happy because, as he says, hey, I'm driving race cars at a, <laughs> at a great track with great people. This is awesome. Michael Cooper continues to uh, lead. He's led all three days pretty dominantly. Took him a while to get around Spencer, like two corners in the first one. But <laughs> after that, he's pretty much uh, had clear sailing ahead of him. Doesn't look like he's taking too much out of the race car right now, looking at his lap times. Just keeping that gap super consistent, about five seconds between he and Spencer. Dynan continuing to just throw down laps in the low to 150 range. And he's getting really close to Frank Gannett. Good. Sean Quinlan, he's responded and closed back in on the tail of Paul Terry here. It's a battle for the final podium position in class. Oh, that's just a shame. You see, Mark's climbed out under the awning of the golf cart and uh, going to watch this one for the rest of it here. Let's see, eight minutes to go. Cooper up 5.2 over Pompelli. He hasn't been able to shake Stavely. He's right there, just sticking with him a little bit, but Terry on the move. Well, he's on the move, but he's struggling for front grip. He's oh, really good. working yeah. the front tires there, trying to get through the carousel. Last lap, Quinlan was a second quicker than him. So, Sean Quinlan definitely got sights on the final podium position. Maybe Terry's just used the tires up here, trying to uh, chase back down the pack after that moment where he got turned around. Yeah, he's really yeah. wide there. He is struggling big time, Paul Terry. Look at him squirming as he tried to get the power down. He's got a cut down tire or something, but he's definitely losing grip and balance. You know, he pushed for everything he had trying to move his way up through the pack. And in this track, the abrasiveness of this, uh, you said it's kind of like with the aggregate that is showing there, it's kind of like a cheese grater on this Pirelli rubber. And it doesn't matter how good a tire is, and these P0s are superb, but it's going to take a toll. Boy, I'll tell you. Burton's flying. He is. He was right up on yeah. Andretti for a minute. Had a little moment there, but he's he's impressive. Yeah, he's really closed in, and uh, I think it's been a great carrot for him to really maintain focus. Has given him a sight line, given him a goal and a target, even though it's not for class position. So I think it's really kept his head in the game here because he's had a monster lead all day long. Here's Spencer. There's Stavely. Heading down through the carousel. Here comes Andretti, fourth overall, and there's Burton. Leading in the AM category. At this stage, if you're talking through this race, the red and racing group, you probably just say, just settle in now. It's just six minutes to go. You don't need to dig any deeper and make a little mistake or overshoot the corner. Last victory is yours if you can just uh, bring it home through these uh, last few laps. And with Clennon's exit, Dynan has gone around Gannett, so right now he's only two spots behind Terry. Yeah, that's a good recovery drive. I know he'll be frustrated. We didn't really see the beginning of that move, but you'd yeah. have to feel that the stewards made the call. He was just a bit too aggressive trying to get to the inside up into turn two, which is always a bit risky. Of 
Cougar rolling into the throttle here. Six minutes to go on the clock, and they're lapping in the 150s or so, so three, maybe four laps left. Only four. Ida looking on. Just veteran crew chief there, engineer. He just does a really nice job, and I think the key is the chemistry as well. I think he and Michael understand each other so well now that the language is uh, spot on. Michael probably doesn't have to say much about what the car is doing for Mark to know what to do and which knobs to twist. Yep, and then you got uh, a guy the talent of Ray Sorensen at the helm of the whole thing. It's a, it's a strong outfit, huh? Multiple championship winners, and uh, Tony Gaples is here on site this weekend, just recovering from eye surgery from a few weeks ago. We thought we might see him in action here this weekend, but he had to go back in for a follow-up procedure. And with the G-Force, you get one of these race cars. Um, doctors just said it's too early for you to be back behind the wheel, but I know he targets Road America as this next round of our championship in his home race to uh, try and get back behind the wheel. Spencer here just trying to reel off these laps. Just didn't feel like he had anything for Michael Cooper here this weekend in race yeah. trim. Oh, this is tight. Uh, this is going to be tricky now because uh, we know how uh, stubborn Jared Andretti is, and uh, you got a class leader up behind him. It's kind of running a similar scenario with different drivers. You had Michael Dine in the first day on his tail at the end, then we had yeah. uh, Paul Terry on day two, and then uh, day three. Different driver in Jeff Burton, but still the M leader right on his bumper. Yep, and right there is the key word. Aggressive up on those curbs. And again, this is one of those risk reward things. How important is it for you to be fourth in the overall as opposed to fifth? Well, when you are leading in the AM category by a lot of ground and up, and you get inside Andretti and don't quite get it done, and there's contact, and you break and you throw away a win. You really got to be thinking about that, don't you? I think you do. Uh, particularly, it's a little bit different dynamic than the last couple of days because uh, the leader, Michael Dine, in the first day had Paul Terry chasing him only three or four seconds back. Reverse rolls for the next day. Byrne has a massive lead, so there's really no point in pushing this. Yes. Yep. Maybe he's decided right there. All right, just ease off a little bit. Look at this. This is, this is a dining closing on Terry. Yeah, I mean, Terry is uh, falling back rapidly here. I'm not sure if he's got a major tire issue or just lost balance, but he is losing lap time big time. And uh, this is allowing Michael to uh, go chase him down. Yeah, looking at the laps here, Terry just turned a 53-3, dining a 50.9. Terry's just hanging on by his fingernails here. Something's gone amiss with that race car, so maybe in the charge back through the field after getting turned around, he just took too much out of his car. Time management is probably the last thing he was thinking about, is how do I get back to the big points here today? Michael's just been charging hard. The lap times that he's been putting together, I'd be curious to compare Michael Dynan's lap times collectively to our winner today and take away the extra or the pit stop. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't mind bet there. <laughs> He's got the fastest times collectively. He was just cutting times in the low 50, one minute 50 range all throughout this stint. Oh, he sure was. There's Andretti with that. Uh, and you know, with everybody else, you'd think they're de he's defending turning into turn nine. With Andretti, no, it's just his normal line. It just proves to be a good defensive line yeah, as well. well. If you're not used to racing with him like Jeff typically isn't, he's probably thinking, well, why does the guy keep defending me? And part of it may be Jeff is just in this groove, and we've seen it before. You start to back off after you've just been in that zone for a while. You can actually start to make the odd mistake and have some issues. And maybe he's just saying, I'm just going to race like I've been racing because it's been working so far. Yeah, he's only got a couple of laps to go here, though. Yeah. So um, he should be good. Just back off a little bit. Uh, agreed. Don't get into anything. No, re no reason to risk anything at this stage. They're going to spend a superb run for him. But... You're absolutely right. I think it has disrupted his flow and rhythm through this race and the circuit. So sometimes it's easier to make a mistake by yourself even when you've uh, suddenly run at a different pace. So basically, this is just overall pride maybe at, at play here. The battle for fourth overall. Burton still maintains that big lead over Jason Bell. Bell has another seven seconds back to Quinlan. 
Tyrese responded a little bit, looking at the uh, timing and scoring, but still Dynan took another four tenths out of that gap. And those could be precious points in the championship chase if uh, Dynan, the championship leader, could get around his closest pursuer. Burton a little wide there. Ooh, but Andretti, he goes to the throttle. It's a huge wiggle. I've seen that twice now, Cal. He's hanging on. Yep. He is really hanging on. So we've seen Paul Terry suddenly start to back up. I think Jared Andretti, same situation here. But he doesn't care. He's a racer down deep. He doesn't want to give up even this overall position. Yep. We should be on to the last lap here. White flag will come out for Michael Cooper. And uh, just a couple of thoughts here as you take a look. That is Tony Gaples, who, of course, is Black Dog. And uh, when they started this weekend, Cal, they had 32 wins in the GTS GT4 category, which is all time most. They're now going to make it 35 <laughs> in one weekend. And that has prompted a couple of people to do a little looking. And they, and I've got a couple of texts that we've looked. We don't think there's any driver in any GT category in World Challenge competition. So GT3, GT4, GTS, GT that has ever won three races on the same weekend. It's been done in touring cars when they would run triple headers. So this might be a uh, sort of historic record setting, certainly a record expanding weekend in terms of wins, but a record setting weekend in terms of individual performance and in, uh, a weekend for a GT driver. In a way, it's fitting it could be Michael Cooper because he's won in every category in World Challenge competition, three-time champion. Yeah, what a weekend. I mean, this will be five straight as well as we date yeah. back to uh, VIR in the last uh, event of the championship chase. So uh, big, big momentum right now. It's going to be tough to beat for the title with the gap that he's uh, extending here over Spencer Pompelli. Just keeping you abreast of the Paul Terry, uh, Michael Dynan situation. The gap remains at about a second. So it looks like Paul Terry is trying to hang on here, even though the balance has gone away in his race car. And as Burton continues to uh, work over Andretti, Oh, he's getting really feisty here. See Andretti there struggling for grip. Here is Michael Cooper. Two corners to go. That Black Dog speed shot McLaren. And the McLaren factory driver comes up, turns into the final corner. The flag awaits a three-peat here at Sonoma for McLaren, Black Dog, and Michael Cooper. And as we said, that might be Historic and record setting. Second place, Pompelli. Third place, Stavely. And looking at that battle, here it is. Andretti does hang on for fourth over Jeff Burton, who wins an AM for Reardon Racing and Aston Martin. So Jeff Burton loves this place, and it shows. And here's this battle. This is for the fourth spot. The points leader in the category and the uh, chasing the guy who's second in the points and Terry runs wide. It could be a drag race to the line. They just touched. Yeah, and I tell you what, that was pretty aggressive there by Paul Terry. He lost grip coming off and just turned it hard right and got into the side of Michael Dine. He'll make it across the line, but I'm not sure what the stewards will think about that one. So. Yeah. Oh, boy. But I'm sure, I'm not justifying it, but Terry is... He's a tough hombre, and uh, if he got tapped by Dinan, he probably thought, all right, bud. <laughs> you want to play that game, that's, that's we'll play it. Again, shouldn't have done it for sure if that was, in fact, intentional. But uh, those are two hard-nosed competitors. Yeah, spirited oh, battle. Course. Yeah, unbelievably good. But what a weekend for Michael Cooper. And as I said, I don't know absolutely that this is historic with the, a GT driver doing a three-peat in a weekend, but uh, it's impressive. And, of course, he gets the CrowdStrike Fastest Lap Award with that 148.069 that he turned in the very early going. And Spencer comes up. Class move by Spencer coming up and acknowledging yeah, the victory by Michael. There's a lot of respect between the two. I know Spencer's frustrated. He feels that yeah. they got all the tools in place to uh, be taken a bit more to Michael right now, but uh, he's on quite the run, and they're going to be tough to beat. Yeah, they are indeed. Get to some other circuits, and maybe the Porsche will be a little bit stronger. Let's take a look at the provisional results. Uh, the top four all pro drivers. Cooper over Pompelli, Stavely completing the podium, and Jared Andretti. It's just been a tough weekend for Andretti Autosports here. And uh, they've done well in the GT 
a sprint X category. They've had some good runs, but just haven't been there in the sprint category. And then Jeff Burton, look at that margin of uh, victory that Jeff had some 17 seconds. Back to Jason Bell, that was a dominant run by the Burton Lumber uh, Aston Martin. Yeah, he made the move on the first lap and never looked back and was looking forward. <laughs> he wanted another overall position there on Jared Andretti at the end. Just a tremendous performance by Red and Racing here this weekend. Yep, and then uh, Jason Bell second, another podium on a busy eight race weekend for him. Sean Quinlan completing the podium at home for Cameron Racing, Steve Cameron Racing, and then the Terry Dinan double contretemps race. And we'll see how that plays out. But Michael Cooper getting out of that car. Fist bump, and uh, look at that. Yeah, three, he says. It was three. It was indeed. And I think he's, that's the five in a row. He's doing good math inside the car. That's impressive. Yeah. No, uh, he He'll knows know. what he's up to. He knows the math. He typically gets out and tells you the points gap. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's thinking about that on the cool down lap, if not before. Wow. And there's Spencer Pompelli, who... Slipped at the start, back to fourth, and uh, just put on a couple of stellar moves to work back up into the second spot. And at the end, he closed it up, but certainly some of that was uh, Cooper managing things just a little bit, but uh, just uh, another, I mean, Spencer Pompelli is as good as they get, and uh, just a great drive by him, just didn't quite have the pace today. And uh, then up on the uh, outside, there you see Jason Bell coming in. He's got to be. I wonder if at the end of it, you know, adrenaline, we've talked about it, is a beautiful thing, but at the end of an eight-race weekend like that, does he just sort of suddenly collapse? We'll take a look at some highlights. Cooper from pole, but watch the move by Jared Andretti. Jumps Pompelli and then comes up almost getting around Drew Stavely. Yeah, it was a wonderful move there by Jared. Then watch a little bit deeper in the pack. Jeff Burton gets a big run here up through turn three and goes off the attack. Clennon, develop here. Yeah, Clennon right there in that white car with the blue lower portion starting on the ampole. But right here, Burton dove to the inside. A decisive pass. Gets through, and then he just checked out. Yeah, yeah the red and racing one, two there with the Aston Martins. Then a big move in this race. Side-by-side -side action. Trading paint, trading places. But it got even a little bit feistier later in the going. You have to think that maybe Michael Dynan was maybe a little bit put off by that move by Paul Terry, and then later on he turns him around, gets a drive-through penalty for that one. Absolutely. Then Spencer fighting back had gone around Andretti and then used this big arc move, Cal. Great move to get around Drew Stavely. Yeah, great respect there by Drew, giving him plenty of racing room as well. He was able to make that happen and tried to close it up, but in the end, a three-peat for Michael Cooper and Black Dog and McLaren. Here at Sonoma Raceway, just a remarkable weekend. And then this little bit of action here. Watch for the Argy Bargy on the exit. Yeah, Terry just gets out wide. You see the understeer. He gets to power, then coming off. Well, from that angle, maybe yeah. he didn't turn right. It was pretty much Michael was sweeping out. And just uh, when the two tires here, it looks a bit more aggressive and more abrupt than it really was possibly. So uh, hopefully the stewards have got a better angle of it than we did there. So... Initially, I thought it was all down to Paul Terry, yeah. but maybe it was just a racing incident. Well, maybe so. And the thing is, when those hot tires, when they touch and everything, sometimes things interlock, and it's like I, I've, I got no control at this point. So we'll see. Yeah, the stewards usually have a lot more angles on things, and that's why we let them make the decisions. Uh, but the decisions for uh, Michael Cooper and uh, Spencer Pompelli and Drew Stavely pretty easy at this point. Head to victory circle. You see Kevin Buckler in the background. Uh on the phone, it looked like, talking to his partners, giving them a rundown on what happened here this weekend. But they'll dig deep. They'll come back at Road America, try and turn things around and see if they can reverse the tables on Black Dog Speed Shop's home turf. I mean, they took a beating here this weekend. Maybe they can return the favor yeah. up in Wisconsin. Yeah, well, there's no quit in, in that program. There's no quit in any of these top pro teams. That's for absolutely sure. Let's get down to Victory Circle in Ryan Marine. For the third straight day, Michael Cooper stands in victory lane in sprint competition in Pirelli GT4 America. Michael, I know you really like this racetrack. You come in with a lot of confidence. What does that do to your mindset coming into a weekend, knowing you're going to a track that not only you enjoy, you excel at? Yeah, I mean, it definitely uh, it doesn't change the mindset for the weekend, really. Um, I like all tracks, uh, but I just seem to be a step ahead of everyone here and that's not to be uh you know i'm not trying to discredit anyone else but just the my record 
shows that. Spencer was quicker than us in qualifying by about four tenths, and I was able to make that move on the first lap of lap one, and I think that really changed the complexion of our weekend. You know, we could be sitting here talking about three second places um, because of how hard it is to pass here, and we saw that. Spencer uh, made one move today, but other than that, in the top three of the pro class, nobody made any passes. So that, that move on the start of race one was really critical to getting these three wins. We believe you are the first driver to win three GT races in the history of the series in the same weekend. And to do it against some of the drivers you mentioned, Spencer and Drew and Jarrett, that's not an easy task. So what does that little piece of history mean to you? Um, it's definitely, definitely special to uh, win three and then uh, three in GT and five in a row uh, going back to VAR. Um, you know, I swept the weekend here in GT3 against guys like Johnny O'Connell, Patrick Long, Alvaro Parent. So this definitely stacks up there right with that. Congratulations on a great weekend. We'll see you at Road America. Thank you again, Ryan. Yeah, one heck of a weekend, one heck of a driver. Yeah, I mean, he is the man here, that is for sure. And um, the confidence uh, is pouring out of his veins right now. But, you know, for good reason. I mean, uh, he put a beating on everyone here today. Yeah, you know, they say it, it isn't bragging when you can back it up. So it's, uh, he's done that and uh, done it very well. There are the results. Cooper, Pompelli, Stavely, the podium, and Andretti in fourth. But, uh, of course, there's the AM category. And let's get back down and hear from a guy who put on a clinic in the AM class. They did indeed. It was a dominant win for Jeff Burton here today. Jeff, congratulations on the first win of the season. How did you get it done? Well, being up front always is a big advantage. And obviously my qualifying got me up front and I just never, never had a chance to go backwards. So uh, took Mr. Clennon on, a, on number four. And after that, uh, I didn't look in my rear view mirror much. I can tell you what, that. What was the strength of the car around this track? Uh, I think Vesco really has the ability to get a car that doesn't degrade on the tires, and we've switched from the two car, the Audi to the Aston, and it's definitely different on the front, and that's been the issue: is those front tires want to give away too quick. Oh, well, really great performance today! Yeah. Congratulations! Thank you very much. Yeah, it was awesome. That was a decisive move up on Clinton into turn four, and uh, it just allowed him to uh, take off at that point. And there's the margin we were talking about, some 17 seconds. Back to Jason Bell, who himself had not just a busy, but a really strong weekend. And then Sean Quinlan right there in third. Terry and Dinan, uh, they had an eventful race at the, uh, well, pretty much all of it, whenever they were close to each other. It was interesting. And then Gannett, and then, of course, Mark Clinton, who had such a good run going and ended up having to retire with some sort of an electrical issue. So that wraps things up for us here at Sonoma. Next up, Road America. Just an amazing track in its own right. Very different than this one. We'll see how things play out. But thanks so much for joining us. For Cal and for Ryan, I'm Greg Creamer. It has been a pleasure to have you with us here in Sonoma. We look forward to seeing you from Road America in Wisconsin.